Hey, how's it going? New episode of Fate Grand Order Babylonia. Going back to Kutha to rescue Gilgamesh. It still says goodbye, blah, blah, blah. Goodbye, goddess of the underworld. Ooh, we got a mysterious servant now. Uh, I'll bring Gilgamesh because there's some assassins, so... Or assassin class enemies. Gate. G... F <laughs> That was laughable. The ruler of the mountainous land of Arata is no match for Uruk. Try and come at me again. Huh? Gilgamesh is in a really good mood. I never thought I'd see him smile like that. You're in a good mood, your majesty. What's Arata? What's Arata? I believe he's referring to the lord of Arata. Excuse me. The arrival of Enmerkar, the first king of Uruk. King Enmerkar came two generations before King Gilgamesh. He was also tricked by Inanna. Ishtar cajoled, cajoled him. I never seen that word. Never apparently said it. Ishtar cajoled him, cajoled him into attacking the land of Arata for its abundant ore. Oh, is that what happened? Sorry, but I don't remember any of it. Sure, Ishtar, sure. Uh-oh. Oh, right, she's getting shorter. And shrunken again. Father would be so sad if he saw me like this. <laughs> hey, Bahamut, Dr. Roman. Do you have something to remember this moment? Like that clicking thing. You should weep for me. Oh. God. What the hell are you doing, fool? That was some force. If Mash hadn't covered me, I would have fallen into the abyss. That was like a huge cat came at him with all the force of a freight train. That, yeah, that'd push you over. Your Majesty, what's the abyss? Is there something lower than the underworld? Uh, is there something lower than the underworld? Ah, the abyss, yes. In Mesopotamia, oh, I read it too slow. There are the heavens and the earth, the underworld under the earth, and beneath that, the abyss. The abyss is a sea of nothingness. The gods Abzu and Tiamat came from the dark sea and created Mesopotamia. You could call it the primordial sea that existed before life itself. Now that Enkidu, the god who managed the abyss, has disappeared, there would be no returning if you fell into it. That's where King Gilgamesh sought the mythic herb of immortality, right? Now that you mention it, I heard that Enkidu also had some dealings here in the underworld, didn't they? If, I'm, if I remember correctly, King Gilgamesh ordered Enkidu to go to the underworld. Then Enkidu told him all about it when they returned. That smile says the king is trying to ignore something he doesn't want to remember. You're pretty knowledgeable, Mass. Mass? You're pretty knowledgeable, Mash. But the truth is actually much worse than that. Goldie over there was really into his new invention, a musical instrument, and had a party for three days and three nights. Erishkagol was fed up with all the noise, so she opened the gate of the underworld just a little. The king was pretty drunk, so he accidentally dropped his instrument into the hole. He was furious. You should have seen the tantrum he threw. And Kidu couldn't just watch the king rage, so they went down to the underworld alone. And so Enkidu went and took a look at the underworld, showed their gratitude to Erishkagol and returned to the surface. Ah, uh, this all happened because you kept asking for help. Something like, there's a snake in the hulupu tree. Help me. Wah. If I hadn't cut down that tree, I would never have made that instrument. Hold on a second. Showed gratitude to Erishkagol? So Enkidu has some relationship with Erishkagol? Yes. Enkidu hated Ishtar, but was respectful to Erishkagol. Erishkagol was the one who took in Enkidu's remains. We couldn't leave the remains of a weapon of the gods on the surface. The thought was that they could rest in peace if they were entombed in the underworld, but... I knew there was time before you lot appeared, so I visited Enkidu's grave. However, their remains had disappeared. Ah, so the young man that called himself Kingu is really Enkidu? I rebooted Enkidu, is that it? But Enkidu's soul was destroyed by the gods. I can understand if it was a servant, but Enkidu couldn't have been revived as a living being in this era. It's just as you say, Ishtar, that Enkidu isn't Enkidu. 
Even though Enkidu was buried, there were things that still resided in the body. That is now what we see. Buried, but something left in the body? Is that possible? But if that's the case... He calls himself Kingu, right? Then just think of him as that. Anyway, we can see the fourth gate now. Let's have fun with the next question we get. Answer me, answer me. There is no reward in faith. Prayers are merely offerings. People do not hope for blessing from the gods. They simply offer their prayers and labors. They are slaves for life. In which case, answer. The fastidious goddess that has the right to accept such precious labor would be... Fastidi I can't really get a read. I guess it's Ishtar? Erishkigal. Um, Fastidi I can't really get a read. I guess it's Ishtar? Despair. You are blind. Oh, I should have read it as Zetsubo. Okay, we got some Galus. I recently weren't learned how to say despair in Japanese because there's a character in Black Clover that just constantly repeated it. Uh, yeah. All he kept doing was Zetsubo, Zetsubo, Zetsubo! And stuff like that. And now I know what Zetsubo Billy means. Or translates to. Not sure about the Billy part. Maybe it's just Despair Billy. Or Billy Despair. No idea. Mm, let's do that. I think Nero might have a chance of killing that copper one. Yep, she did. Probably could have taken out the middle Galu spirit. No, Raiko. Stop hitting her. It's not nice. Uh, sure. Ute, 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 ute. Ute, ute, ute. I can't remember what Ute means. Fire? No. That was some. Oh, damn it, of course they go for Raikou. Uh. Fire was something else. Fire, 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 fire. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Got to watch uh, Spirited Away at my at the fan event tonight at the movie theater. It was very good. Very good turnout too. Half, pretty much the entire movie theater was full. It was quite surprising, especially for an animated movie. And there was some annoying people behind us saying like they were just super loud before the movie started. Which I mean, yeah, it's fine to talk before the movie starts when you're ordering your food and. You know, lights are still on, they're doing the raffle and whatnot. But, God, her voice was so loud and just obnoxious sounding. And she kept saying stuff like, Oh, yeah, I love this anime, this movie, but I don't think it... I think it's technically not an anime. And blah, blah, blah. I'm like, shut up, you're so annoying. You don't know what you're talking about. I never got the full story of why she thought that, but god, it was annoying. I'm just gonna fire her. Uh, Gilgamesh off. But it was a good movie. Got a cool, um... It's a glassware soda can. You know, it's shaped like a soda can, but it's a glass... Pint glass or whatever. Probably not an actual pint size, but it says, like, Flix Fan Fest on one side, and has a little silhouette of no face on it on the other it's pretty cool got a free or you know got the little uh, imitation ticket like an admit one ticket because they like to do that at most at pretty much all the fan fests and let's see what else was there uh, the raffle was like really cool looking hand-drawn uh, no face from a local artist that comes and draws all sorts of posters and whatnot I got a few hanging in my room right now of uh, Deadpool and uh, Xenomorph Ooh, he's cool looking mindless corpse deck king stagnation but um uh, what should I do I'll give Nero some mental resist 
Um, but yeah, it was like no face with like some parts of his body that were like branching off like a tree, and I think there was like cherry blossoms around it, floating down or something. It was very cool looking, and it was signed, probably by the artist, of course. Uh, not Hayao Miyazaki or whoever else worked on the movie. Uh, I think the grand prize winner was some sort of movie pass and uh, No Face Piggy Bank. They look cool. I wanted it, but my ticket didn't win, unfortunately. Kept getting close, but never won. Uh, let's see. Yeah, just fire off Gilgamesh. Again. Sate. 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 No. Saturation. Global saturation. Name that line. I'll give you five seconds. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. Four Mississippi. Five Mississippi. Up oh, too late. If you guessed Wesker from Resident Evil 5, you guessed correctly. If you guessed Marcus Phoenix from Gears of War, you guessed incorrectly. If you guessed Elmo from Sesame Street, you guessed correctly. No, I'm kidding. I have no idea what I'm talking about. It's late when I'm recording this. I don't know why I waited so long to record, but I did. I'm going to pay the price for it, probably. Gilgamesh is about to die. Farewell and adieu to East fair Spanish ladies. I watched uh, Jaws last night before bed. Should have gone to sleep while it was playing because it just kept getting later and later as it was going on, but haven't seen it in a while, so I wanted to watch it. And uh, watch the original Terminator before that. I forgot how much uh, nudity was in that. You see Linda Carter's chest, you see Arnold Schwarzenegger's penis just flopping in the wind. Forgot about that entirely. And some of the practical effects, granted I'm sure they were good at the time, but they don't look too great. Uh, she's still got her debuff resist or whatever it is so boop, boop, and boop. I'm sure he's not gonna have Caesar's double phantasm but I'm sure he'll still hit hard Finally got to go, I don't know why I said finally, I saw it last night, but managed to go to Best Buy today and pick up uh, Nausicaa the Valley of Wind, which is a Miyazaki movie I've never seen, and picked up Totoro, which there's a weird thing about the cover of Totoro, I don't know if it's like an older version of Totoro or something, but the cover has like the them waiting by the bus stop scene but it's Totoro and then next to him is like a fusion of Satsuki and Mei like I'll post a picture I'll put a picture in here but and then I'll put a picture of what Satsuki and Mei look like here uh yeah what's up with that it's supposed to be the two of the little girls standing next to Totoro, but this one looks more like a fusion of Satsuki and Mei. I, I'm so confused. Maybe just older art or something? Concept art? Die. There we go. Uh, also stopped by the bookstore and managed to find the first volume of uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I added an extra like ED or something to that sentence that word. Okay, I've got time for another one, I think. Another unknown. I'm going to bring... Oh, yeah. I'll bring her. Bring, uh, ruler... 
Martha. Sorry, but I think that's enough. When did this turn into whose goddess is it anyway? <laughs> nice. This is serious. Hmm? Doctor, is there a problem with that? As Ishtar said, they're all very important questions. This is really teaching me a lot. What did you say? No, Mash is becoming a bad girl. Ishtar's lifestyle is a bad influence on her. What's that supposed to mean? Arishka Gol is the one asking weird questions. It's not my fault. I'm not sure about that. Arishka Gol's problems are your problems. If the roles were reversed, I think you would have prepared the same questions. N that's not true. I would have been much more clever and circumspect about asking stuff like this. So you wouldn't really ask anything different. That's Ishtar for you. Huh. Sweet little mash. So innocent. She's tiny! We can almost fit her into the entire screen. Ah! The gate shocked me again. I think I'm getting used to this, which is kind of scary. Fantastic. It was funny to start, but now it's becoming a problem. We can't keep losing strength, even if it's Ishtar's. If things keep going like this, fighting Erishkagol will be difficult. Just what level of divinity is this Erishkagol? Is she the same rank as you, Ishtar? No, she's not quite on Ishtar's level. She's an old goddess like Ishtar, but in terms of raw power, she's not as impressive. It sounded like he just complimented Ishtar. Ishtar was a daughter of the heavens, so she got everything she wanted. The gods spoiled her and tended to her every beck and call. Also, Ishtar got Enki, the god of the abyss, drunk and robbed him blind. That was pretty bad. It was the greatest heist in the history of the gods. It was also pretty funny, even to the other gods. Enki got completely smashed and gave all of the divinity to Ishtar. When he woke up, he had nothing left. Ishtar had already loaded all his wealth onto Mana, and that was on, and was on her way back to the surface. Enki went into a panic and had his slaves chase after her, but the boat of heaven was far too fast. Enki was in tears. He wrung his hands and screamed, warning that a stupid bratty girl was going to run the heavens and the earth and begged for help. The gods and humans that were watching screamed out. Take a look at that driving technique. Who would have thought the boat of heaven could be used for drift racing? Wait, really? They said that? No one can catch up to that. Surely, her driving mastery will go down in legend as the drunk and the divine. Underworld Drift. <laughs> oh god, it's a Fast and Furious reference. Drunk and the divine, Underworld Drift. No one in Uru could ever be faster. I hate to admit it, but even I thought so too. Ishtar had been hiding her true colors up until then. I think I just read the quotation in, er, his... Statement in the quotation's voice. Oh, whatever do you mean? The boat of heaven's automatic transmission was broken that day, so I just switched to manual gear. And I always carried it. <laughs> Nitro in my boat. Just in case I needed it. Always. What do you think, Bahamut? This is the patron deity of Uruk. Now do you understand how I feel? I'm starting to think that the curse is a divine punishment. Ischar is such a free spirit. I'm starting to think that the curse is a divine punishment. In the end, the boat of heaven had engine trouble and stalled just before the harbor in Uduk. Tragedy was averted in the nick of time. As you can see, this is the story of Ishtar, a goddess who coveted everything she saw. On the other hand, Rishkakol did not desire anything. When the underworld was created, she sent was sent to become its ruler and foundation. The music stopped. No, no, it didn't. I was like, it's become a little more somber. Um, someone had to maintain the underworld, and Arishkagal was unlucky enough to have that responsibility thrust onto her. Arishkagal on had only just been born when she was cast into the underworld and became the mistress of the depths of the earth. She managed the spirits of the dead for tens of thousands of years without being able to spend a moment on the surface or in the heavens. That's so sad, I wouldn't have thought to feel bad for her before. But I do now. It's not just that she couldn't leave. The worst part is that she couldn't see new worlds or meet new people. In exchange, Arishkagol became invincible in the underworld. 
Even the gods cannot go against her laws in the underworld. Just ask that tiny, 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 tiny girl over there. But outside the underworld, her special privilege disappears. She's about mid-level in terms of divinity, I'd say. Also, if she's up against someone who's alive, then she has to kill them first, or the laws of the underworld won't go into effect. So the only ones that aren't affected by Arishkigal's laws are Bahamut and Mash. I see, so that's why you were waiting for Bahamut. <laughs> someone who's alive and can put up a fight, basically. My only concern was that Bahamut might get killed by the Galu spirits the moment he entered the underworld. But it seems that Ishtar prevented that. She dropped to the underworld with you and protected you when you were most vulnerable. Did you get a bit less dumb? Maybe your negative qualities like debauchery and stinginess cancelled each other out and made a positive? Who are you calling debauched? As if. You don't know me, Goldie. Stop. So stop talking. And I'm not stingy. I'm financially responsible. I have a reason for collecting jewels. Don't believe everything Goldie says, Bahamut. Okay. I'll try. Answer me, answer me. Existence is the practice of cur curtailing waste. Living is the practice of cultivating waste. It is the duty of the wise to eat finely, to scheme, and to find happiness. However, listen. Unlimited intake of nourishment invites excess flab. If you were to live your life, that would be... Uh... However, listen, unlimited intake of nourishment invites excess flab. If you were to live your life, that would be... Fat meat and Ishtar. Erishkigal is good for the liver. Uh, well, I'm gonna stick with my answers and keep going with Ishtar. Fat meat and Ishtar. You're being judgmental. Bahamut, not all Chinese restaurants are bad for you. You can just exercise after you eat lots of fat. The same with meat. You can achieve balance that way. Forget excess flab on your waist, you can prevent it in your heart. Fat 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 fat. Oh wow. We gotta fight a fattened Galu spirit. Poor Ishtar, she just got fat shamed. Even though she's not fat. Um do that. What was I talking about before all this? Uh, the movie, the people, I don't know, I don't remember, something, Ooh, nice, uh, I really don't remember, oh right, I was talking about global saturation and some bullshit like that, yeah, I don't know, So I'm super excited for next week. My car is going to be paid off. And I can't wait. I'm so happy to finally get like what I've been putting towards my car's payments finally back into my wallet. Oh, happy days. I'm so excited. I can't wait. I could technically pay it off now, but that would put me in the red. Um... Try that. Maybe it won't. It'll probably die to Nero. Yeah. Oh well. Try to give Martha some NP. Not gonna happen, I guess. Fatal battle? Oh no. We gotta fight Boot Machine. It's a ruler. Damn it. I sh should have brought a damn Avenger like I thought. <sighs> mm, yeah, I guess I'll do that. NP gain, fire off Raikou, cause she'll probably die when it does its first attack. Do that. Give her an attack boost. And... Fire! Thankfully though, ruler versus ruler cancels it, or just makes it base damage. Thankfully, Berserker has affinity to everything. Although it's also not a good thing, but eh, it works in my favor. Oh, that's right, I was talking about stuff I bought too. Yeah. Bought that time I got reincarnated as slime. I'm looking forward to reading that. 
I was actually looking mainly for Goblin Slayer at the bookstore, but they didn't have it. They had the manga. I'd rather read the light novel, how it originated. Damn. Although, the manga was saran wrapped, so uh, that's a good sign that there was very mature content in it, which is also good, because the anime was very dark at the beginning. Uh, sure, go with them. Saw that and I was like, what is going on? I was not expecting this with goblins and whatnot. Did not expect rape scenes and whatnot in that anime. I was like, I barely ever feel uh, uncomfortable with like TV shows and whatnot, but watching that I was like, oh, this is... I'm even feeling bad about this and weird about this. Not good weird, bad weird, like, what am I watching? And then the rest of the anime was not really like that at all. I think there was like one more dark scene after that, but... Damn, this thing hits like a freight train. Do that. And that. Just to be safe. Oh, it's only got 676 health. Go! Skahawk! Just to be safe, I'm using all three. I don't know why, but I'm doing it. Keep you! Muskathaharik? Probably send that wrong. Oh well. Battle finish! Oh, you're so close, Nero. Hey, I'm also close to leveling up. Yay! I saw the level caps level 140 now. Okay, um, it's close enough. I'll call the episode here. Like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications, and I will see you for the next episode of Fate Grand Order Babylonia.